the rules of quantum mechanics, the Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics is 100% clear that if you want to measure it clockwise when it's clockwise and measure it counterclockwise when it's counterclockwise, then when it starts out in a superposition, what will happen is that you and the electron will entangle with each other. And by that, I mean that the state of the universe evolves into part saying the electron was spinning clockwise and I saw it clockwise. And part of the state is it's in a superposition with the part that says the electron was spinning counterclockwise and I saw it counterclockwise. Everyone agrees with this. Entirely uncontroversial, straightforward consequence of the Schrodinger equation. And then Niels Bohr would say, and then part of that wave function disappears. <laughs> and we're in the other part. And you can't predict which part it will be, only the probability. Hugh Everett, who was a graduate student in the 1950s, was thinking about this, says, I have a better idea. Part of the wave function does not magically disappear. It stays there. The reason why that idea, Everett's idea, that the whole wave function always sticks around and just obeys the Schrodinger equation was not thought of years before is because naively you look at it and you go, okay, this is predicting that I will be in a superposition, that I will be in a superposition of having seen the electron be clockwise and, and having seen it be counterclockwise. No experimenter has ever felt like they were in a superposition. You always see an outcome, okay? Everett's move, which was kind of genius, was to say, the problem is not the Schrodinger equation. The problem is you have misidentified yourself in the Schrodinger equation. You have said, oh, look, there's a person who saw counterclockwise. There's a person who saw clockwise. I should be that superposition of both. And Everett says, no, 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 you're not. Because the part of the wave function in which the spin was clockwise, once that exists, it is completely unaffected by the part of the wave function that sends, says the spin was counterclockwise. They are apart from each other. They are uninteracting. They have no influence. What happens in one part has no influence in the other part. So Everett says the simple resolution is to identify yourself as either the one who saw spin clockwise or the one who saw spin counterclockwise. There are now two people. Once you've done that experiment, the Schrodinger equation doesn't have to be messed with. All you have to do is locate yourself correctly in the wave function. That's many worlds. The number of worlds is very, big. very, very, very big. Where do those worlds fit? Where so do they go? The short answer is the worlds don't exist in space. Space exists separately in each world. So, I mean, there's a technical answer to your question, which is Hilbert space, the space of all possible quantum mechanical states. But physically, you know, we, we want to put these worlds somewhere. That's just a wrong intuition that we have. There is no such thing as the physical spatial location of the worlds because space is inside the worlds. One of the properties of this interpretation is that you can't travel from one world to the other. That's right which kind of makes you feel that <laughs> they're existing separately. They are existing separately and, and simultaneously. And simultaneously. Without locations in space. Without locations in space. How is it possible to visualize them existing without a location in space? The real answer to that, the honest answer, is the equations predict it. Yeah, yeah. If you can't visualize it, so much worse for you. But the equations are crystal clear about what they're predicting. Is there a way to get to the closer to understanding and visualizing the weirdness of the implications of this? You know, I don't think it's that hard. It wasn't, it wasn't that hard for me. You know, I don't mind the idea that when I make a quantum mechanical measurement, there is later on in the universe multiple descendants of my present self who got different answers for that measurement. I can't interact with them. Um, Hilbert space, the space of all quantum wave functions was always big enough to include all of them. I'm gonna worry about the parts of the universe I can observe. So let's put it this way. Many worlds comes about by taking the Schrodinger equation seriously. The Schrodinger equation was invented to fit the data to fit the spectrum of different atoms and different you know, emission and absorption experiments. 
And it's perfectly legitimate to say, well, okay, you're taking the Schrodinger equation, you're extrapolating it, you're trusting it, believing it beyond what we can observe. I don't want to do that, right? That's perfectly legit, except, okay, then what do you believe? <laughs> Come up with a better theory. You're saying you don't believe the Schrodinger equation. Tell me the equation that you believe in. Turns out, and people have done that, turns out it's super hard to do that in a legitimate way that fits the data. And Many Worlds is a really clean. Absolutely, the most austere, clean, no extra baggage theory of quantum mechanics. So if it in fact is correct, isn't this the weird, the weirdest thing of anything we know? Yes, in fact, let me, let me put it this way. The single best reason in my mind to be skeptical about many worlds is not because it doesn't make sense or it doesn't fit the data or I don't know where the worlds are going or whatever. It's because to make that extrapolation, to take seriously the equation that we know is correct in other regimes, requires new philosophy, requires a new way of thinking about identity, about probability, about prediction, a whole bunch of things. I And I it's work to do that philosophy, and I've been doing it, and others have done it, and I think it's very, very doable, but it's not straightforward. It's not a simple extrapolation from what we already know. It's a grand extrapolation very far away. And if you just wanted to be sort of methodologically conservative and say, that's a step too far, I don't want to buy it, I'm sympathetic to that. I, I think that you're just wimping out. <laughs> I think that you should have more courage, but I, I get the impulse. And there is, under many worlds, an era of time where if you rewind it back, uh, there's going to be one initial state. That's right. All of quantum mechanics, all different versions require a kind of arrow of time. It might be different in every kind, but... The quantum measurement process is irreversible. You can measure something, it collapses, you can't go backwards. If someone tells you the outcome, if I say, I've measured an electron, its spin is clockwise. And they say, what was it before I measured it? You know there was some part of it that was clockwise, but you don't know how much, right? And many worlds is no different. But the nice thing is that the kind of arrow of time you need in many worlds is exactly the kind of arrow of time you need anyway for entropy and thermodynamics and so forth. You need a simple, low entropy initial state. That's what you need in both cases. 